All right, good Tuesday afternoon, everybody. David Paul with you in the KHOU 11 Weather Center. We wanted to step in here and give everybody an update on what's going on with the weather because some big changes are in the process of rolling in across Texas and overnight tonight into the morning hours. Those changes will arrive here in Houston with much cooler air and a, a pretty good rain chance, not just this afternoon, and we're on a severe weather watch for this afternoon, but uh, we may see rain that heavily impacts Wednesday morning's commute as the cooler air arrives with a, uh, a pretty good chance for rain and maybe even an elevated thunderstorm as we head through the, the early and mid morning hours. So let me get you caught up and show you how things are playing out. First of all, it's very warm. This is typical ahead of a big change, ahead of a cold front. South breeze being pulled up off the Gulf of Mexico. Temperatures are flirting with or, or have reached the 80 degree mark. Brenham is at 80, Hobby 79, Sugarland 78, Pearland at 77. So very warm. This is the last warm day we're going to have probably for the rest of the month as the models are trending very cold for the next week or two. Now with all this warm air in place and a little bit of a twist in the atmosphere, there is an elevated chance for a severe thunderstorm or even maybe an isolated tornado in our northeast counties as we head through the rest of the afternoon and into the evening hours. Now the Storm Prediction Center has Huntsville, Cleveland, Liberty, in the yellow area, that's a level two threat out of a five tiered category threat level. Level three includes Lufkin Jasper, a little bit further northeast of Houston, but it does include Polk County. And so Polk County, we're watching you very carefully. Polk County, you are included in a tornado watch that is in effect right now until 10 o'clock tonight. So we go to the radar. And so far, it's just been a handful of scattered showers and the only real lightning and thunder we've seen has been up here in our northeastern counties where it's a little more likely that we could see a severe thunderstorm or an isolated tornado. We haven't seen one of those so far, but this is the spot. San Jacinto County, Polk County, where the most active weather in our area could happen. And we are seeing a pretty good thunderstorm just moving north out of Grimes County into Madison County, keeping an eye on that one as well. All the counties lit up in red under a tornado watch for Crockett, Palestine, Franklin, your tornado watch goes until 5 o'clock. And then for areas to the east along and east of I-59, that tornado watch in effect until 10 o'clock tonight. And that does include here in Polk County, a tornado watch in effect until 10 o'clock. A closer look at the storms up here, San Jacinto, Polk County. So one of the things we are looking for is rotation. We haven't seen any significant rotation out of these cells so far. But lightning is an indicator that we could see some rapid intensification and we're seeing a little bit of lightning with this thunderstorm cell near Cold Spring as it races north northeast at about 40 miles an hour. So we're watching that one carefully, but at the moment there is no severe weather warning for that one right now. Corrigan's got a pretty good thunderstorm just to, uh, to the west of Corrigan there on uh, 59. We're keeping an eye on that one too. Further to the west, this is a strong thunderstorm. It's now exited the northern portion of Grimes County. There's Beat Eyes, there's Anderson, so it's north of you. Madisonville, that's an intense little cell pushing in your direction. These won't last long. Again, they're racing north at about 40, but that's one that we are also keeping an eye on for the potential for it to go severe, but so far it has not. The greatest severe threats would be small hail, damaging straight line winds, brief heavy rain, and then maybe an isolated tornado. Into the heart of Houston and Harris County, a small handful of scattered showers. These are brief, heavy downpours, but nothing severe, and they're all racing northeast at about 35 to 40 miles an hour. Baytown, Shore Acres, uh, a little uh, shower near you, almost a thunderstorm. Again, these have not been producing any lightning here in Harris County. A shower right over the Jersey Village area right now. Looks like Woodwind Lakes is getting wet. Spring just west of you, pretty good shower there, lifting to the north. That's up there near Luetta. So that's what we're looking at across Harris County. Nothing severe, but some isolated, heavier downpours. Zooming out, so the driving force behind all of this weather threat this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow is this low pressure area spinning here in the central plains. And that is what is in the process of pushing this cold front into Texas and eventually through southeast Texas and Houston. And that will happen as we head into the late evening and overnight hours. Here's where we stand right now in Texas. You see all the active weather along and out ahead of that front. And as far as severe weather warnings go, the red boxes are the active tornado warnings. And we've got a couple of them, but they're, they're here. They're north of Lufkin. So, you know, here's the immediate Houston area. There's San Jacinto and Polk County. 
So the further north and east you get in the state, the more likely it is you'll get severe weather. And that so far is where we've had all the severe warnings, what there have been of them up here to the north and east of the Houston area. That's why that uh, severe weather watch is to our north and east. Here's how this plays out. Cold front just about to reach College Station by 7 o'clock this evening and a line of showers and maybe a couple of embedded thunderstorms out ahead of it. And again, you can see how the severe weather threat, the brighter colors on future track expand the further north and east you go. That's by 7 o'clock this evening. Front pushes through the area overnight, but I wanted to draw your attention to this. What are your plans tomorrow morning? Do you have a doctor appointment early? Do you have plans you got to get on the road early tomorrow morning? We'll be on the air 430 to 7 on the TV side because there may indeed be some heavy pockets of rain going into 7 a.m., even though at that time the actual frontal boundary and severe weather threat will be well to the east of us. We could have lingering showers that could make for a messy morning commute. And then look at temperatures. Low 60s, mid upper 50s northwest counties. And at this point, we'll begin to get a northwest wind behind the front, and that will be ushering in, opening the door to the much more December like temperatures. These are high temps on Wednesday. As we clear out, sunshine comes out in the afternoon, but highs only struggling to make the mid 60s with that cool northwest breeze. And that will set the stage for a chilly Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Take a look at temps going into Thursday morning at 7 a.m. You know, Bush down to 41, Pearland at 40, College Station 39, Brenham 38. So that's a whole lot more like what we would expect to see and like to see going into the second half of September, excuse me, of December and getting closer to Santa Claus and Christmas time. And these temperatures look like they may continue to get colder and colder with more shots of cold air as we head deeper into the December month. Take a look at what's going on with temps across the nation. Casper, Wyoming down to 13 degrees. Denver's below freezing at 23. That's on the back side of our low pressure area sitting right here. In fact, you can see how temperatures are kind of curly queuing into that low, the warm air being pulled north on the east side, the cold air coming down on the west side. So that's the genesis of our storm system. Looking up into Canada, it's actually a warm day in Kugluktuk. They're up to three degrees. Alerts cold at 15. But what has our attention is what's going on in Siberia. This actually looks like it's going to be the source region for the bitter cold air that is coming into North America and into the United States as we head deeper into the month. Kandaga is at 56 below zero. Shrednikolims is 36 below zero, 48 degrees below zero at Sussman. So it's just unbelievably cold in Siberia as happens this time of year in this part of Russia. But the upper level flow is going to become much more conducive to bringing that cold air out of Siberia, which is right here. See the flow? right on down into the lower 48 as we head through the coming days. This is Saturday the 17th with a big dip in the jet stream and that will open the door to cold air to come down into the United States and all the way into Texas. And I expect things are going to get quite cold going in to this coming weekend. We may flirt with freezing in many locations, especially north of I-10 for parts of the coming weekend, Saturday morning and Sunday morning. So that's cold. That's a cold pattern. You get that big diving jet, especially when it comes out of Western Canada coming across the Arctic Circle. That's Saturday. Let's go forward in time. So it may be that the cold, it doesn't go away, but it kind of backs off a little bit as our jet stream becomes a little more zonal going into Monday the 19th. Now we're into Christmas week, but watch what happens going deeper into the week. Tuesday, Wednesday, ooh, there it is. Going into Thursday and Friday the 23rd of December, just two days before Christmas. This is another very cold pattern. That's even colder than, than the first two that are, that are coming in the coming week. And so if this were to verify, you know, that could open the door to some very cold, that Siberian air to come all the way south. Again, this is a long range forecast. This is 10 days out. So, you know, things can change, but if it verifies, this could be one that brings very cold temperatures to the southern United States, including Texas. And so it's something that we're paying close attention to. But that that pattern right there with that big dip in the jet, that's one that can bring in that Arctic air all the way to Texas. Uh, as far as today, we got a 60% chance for thunderstorms going into the afternoon, especially in our north and eastern counties. And then looking ahead, you know, it's lows in the 30s and 40s as far as the eye can see as we head into Thursday morning, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. 
That's where we stand right now. We are monitoring for potential severe weather warnings as we head it deeper into the afternoon and evening. Uh, Tim Pandagis and I will both be doing weather at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 6 o'clock. So we'll give you a complete detailed update on exactly what's going on. We'll get updated computer models going into 4, 5, and 6. On the TV side, we're live then. We'll see you then for our next live update.